TSPN TV, ATCA, Amador Tuolumne Community Action Agency, and Friday Night Live present TZL, Teen Zone Live. This program is made possible by Friday Night Live and ATCA. The Amador Tuolumne Community Action Agency are pleased to bring you TZL. This program is proudly brought to you by the youth of Amador County. With special thanks to Jackson Rancheria Park and Field Restoration Project. Please get involved. Our children need and deserve it. And Round Table Pizza, the last honest pizza. And now, TZL, Teen Zone Live. Welcome to TZL, a show by teens for teens. I'm Emily. And I'm Carlin. And we have an awesome show for you tonight. Yeah, it's going to be really, really fun. A lot of different things, how to make smoothies later, and a lot of different things to make. Um, how awesome was that pizza today? It was awesome, like always. Yeah. We like to thank Roundtable Pizza for... Um, Supporting us and giving us this amazing pizza. <laughs> it's the last honest pizza and the only pizza that we eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, one thing in our show we're going to be talking about today is Red Ribbon Week. <laughs> um, it's from October 23rd to the 31st. Um, a lot of schools in the district are partaking in it, just especially <laughs> elementary schools and junior high schools. Um, and who else is talking about it in the show? Um, I think. We have um, Zach and Hattie talking about that later. Yay! And I remember Red Ribbon Week when I was in elementary school. It was the best week of the year, even better than the last week of school. It was so much fun. Did you get like anything like a necklace or a pencil or something? I remember we got these snap bracelets that we would always hit on our wrists, and they would leave red marks because we would yeah. do it nonstop. But and then you'd get it taken away by the teacher. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember yeah. we had like the little red cups that would, you'd put in the fence and it'd be like kick out alcohol or something like that. Just something for us to remember not to do anything when we're older. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> so later we're also going to be talking to Gabby from Amador. Um, she's in the drama department and she's going to be talking about the Broadway dinner, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. We also have safety tips for this next, or for this upcoming uh, holiday, which is my favorite, Halloween. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so much fun. Yeah. Um, we're we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> okay, we're going to do safety tips for just safe Halloween games. Um, How to have fun. Safely. <laughs> um, and then... Um, wait. Wait, what are you going to dress up for, for Halloween? I don't know. I think it's going to be something a little outside of the box this year. Mm. That's fun. I'm going to be <laughs> a fairy, I think. Oh, you did tell me about that. Yeah, I'm going to be sparkly and white and pink and <laughs> fairy full. <laughs> well, for the end of our show, we are learning how to make delicious smoothies mm. from Hattie and who else is doing it? Patty and DJ. I love that guy. <laughs> um, so what are your like favorite breakfast? Well, for smoothies, I love smoothies. I love strawberry. Strawberry is my favorite. Strawberry and banana. Mm -hmm. Just cold in the morning. It kind of wakes me up and it's healthy yeah. and really easy to make. Okay. So, I think mine is probably Greek yogurt with mm. blueberries in it. Ooh, that's yummy. And so later we'll also before that we'll be interviewing or er, Carlin and our friend Zach will be interviewing Jesse from Accra about upcoming events that they're doing and so we'll hear about that. Yep. And she's really fun and really, really cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> she's awesome. That's that's gonna be fun. And also we're having a interview with our other cast members later in the show, just on the teen topic of drinking, drugs, alcohol, things like that. So, like, we're taking Red Ribbon Week and we're kind of Running with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much the main point of our show this week. Evening? Yep. <laughs> and, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Having a great show today. Mm-hmm. Lots of fun things. Lots of fun people in to interview. Cool interviewees. So, what <laughs> else? We are going to... Um, Pretty soon we're going to go over to Andrew and Gavin who are going to be talking about uh, um, school out school announcements and upcoming, like upcoming events, events like news, football games for Argonaut like because we're awesome. For both the schools. So, so we are we going to go to them, them over there. And we will see you guys later. Yeah. I think. Yep. Later. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm Gavin. This is Gavin, and we're starting our segment with an inspiring story from our community. Our inspiring story for this week is the story of our own community helping out the Ross family, hailing from Florida, who've just really been down on their luck. Their vehicle broke down. They didn't really have any place to stay, so they've just really been down on their luck once again, and. Our community really stepped up. We took them in, and this Saturday, October 6th, we're hosting a spaghetti dinner at Lake Amador. There will be a silent auction, a raffle being held from 5 to 8 p.m., along with karaoke and, and dancing until 11 p.m. All of the proceeds will be going to the Ross family to help them get to South Dakota. Please support the Ross family. All right, um, now I'll do school announcements for this week. First of all, we're going to have school break for October, fall break, which is going to start October 8th and ends October 12th. And for high schoolers, I'm pretty sure it's for Amber too, but Argonaut ends on an A-Day, well, begins on A-Day. And then Argonaut is going to be at a home game. When is it? When's the home game? Friday. Friday, Friday. Um, versus Linden at home. And Amador is going to go over to Calaveras for the same day, right, Saturday? And then um, also, Argonaut is also. What? Oh, sorry. Um, Argonaut's also been in the top 10 for California football teams, I think. But they're number nine in the top 10. And they also went to Alaska, the varsity did, and they won against Alaska. And back to Andrew, what's your up- first one upcoming events? Okay, um, coming up, come to downtown Ion on October 13th for the annual IBCA Harvest Fair. At 8 a.m., FNL is helping coordinate the Scarecrow Contest. There will be eight Scarecrows entered from Ion Junior High. All community members are welcome to enter and make their own Scarecrow. Just bring our Scarecrow outfit. Cash prizes will be handed out to the winners. Um, hey, Gavin, what are you doing over break? Uh, I might just relax. I might just re- enjoy the fact that we're finally out of school. Isn't it like our final or first break in an entire school year? Yeah, quarter grades wrap up this week and um, we're going to be on break. It'll be a lot of fun stuff. Finally get to relax a little. <laughs> yeah. We'll also be having a break from Teens Zone Live, so we won't be on TV yeah. for a while. And also coming up in the community is the Fall Festival at the Amador Flower and Flower Farm and Nursery. And it's going to be on October 6th and 7th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And basically anyone can come. It's free. And you can visit the farm animals, take a ride around the farm. And there's hay mazes, pumpkin patches, and cornfield mazes. And then... Also, there would be Italian ice and food available for sale. Or you could just bring your own lunch if you'd like. And there's no admission fee at all. Sounds interesting. Have you ever had any Italian ice? Yes, it's pretty good stuff. What's your favorite flavor? Cherry. Cherry? I prefer mango. Mm, Not much of a tropic fruit fan. Is that even tropic? (laughs) It's more like an exotic flavor. Okay. Um, Sunday, October 14th, there will be Scarecrows on Main Street. Don't miss it. Amador County fifth graders compete for bragging rights and a pizza party. Scarecrows on display on Main Street, Jackson. Friday and Saturdays on October 19th through 27th 
at Preston Castle, there's um, a tour of Pre Preston Castle where visitors will be guided by like the spirits of the wards who live there. It'll be safe, fun, and somewhat scary. That's <laughs> a pretty good combination there. And special activities for the kitties, and there's a haunted castle there. And <laughs> shoot, um, four nights. It's <sighs> darn. Um, it's twenty dollars for adults to go. Students with ID, like if you have a student ID card, it's ten dollars. And fun fair and car carnival for children under ten dollars is five dollars. And have you ever been to Preston Castle? Seems like a rather <laughs> scary experience. <laughs> no, the closest I got to it's the front gate. <laughs> Front gate? Yeah, the I've front I've never gate. been either. <laughs> seems like it'd be a rather frightening experience, though. So. Yeah, it seemed pretty frightening when Ghost Adventures went there. Yeah. Sorry, we through. Okay, in a little bit, we're going to be going That's over to an ad break. Two, five. Main Street will be having trick-or-treating for the children and a Halloween parade. Usual on Main Street in Jackson on October 31st. So show up there, have some fun, get some candy. Okay. Visit the dentist. Looks like we're gonna have to go to an ad break soon. So thank you for listening to our announcements. Yeah, thank you. And then come on. Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And tonight we are here to talk to you about Red Ribbon, Red Ribbon Week. Zach, what is your honest opinion of Red Ribbon Week? I think it's awesome. So do I. I know, I know a bit of the history about it, so I, it's interesting, really. I mean, it, it's also a very sad it story. It is. I read the story. You, you, you know the story? Would you like to give us a little background on it? Yeah. Red Ribbon Week began after the kidnapping and murder of drug reinforced drug enforcement enforcement sorry I can't speak tonight administration agent Enrique Kiki yep it's his Camarina in 1985 agent Camarina had been working undercover in Guadalajara Guadalajara Mexico for over four years his efforts to lead that to a tip result that resulted in the discovery of a military multi-million dollar narcot narcotics narcotics manufacturing operation in Chihuahua, Mexico. <laughs> Chihuahua, Mexico. Awesome name. I can't um, <laughs> I'm not And Red Bull Ribbon Week actually really started um, after the men were found. Citizens in Camarena's hometown of Calexico, California, um, they donned red ribbon, red ribbons in his in his honor. You know, they that was their thing to show that they supported what he was working for, what he was doing. You know, and that that's where the whole red ribbons week started. Is they were wearing these red ribbons, and um, it actually really got official in 1988 when um, the first national red ribbon week. Can I say that? Women. It's difficult to say. Gosh. Um, was organized by the National Family Partnership um, and proclaimed by the U.S. Congress and chaired by Nancy Reagan, actually. I did not know that until you just said it. It's, it's interesting. There's, there's a lot of um, history behind it. Well, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration website says that Red Ribbon Week is nationally recognized and celebrated, helping to preserve special agent Cal Camarena's memory and further the cause for which he gave his life. The Red Ribbon Campaign also became a symbol of, su of support for the DA, DE, DEA. DEA's effort to reduce demand for drugs through prevention and education programs. And actually, by w wearing the uh, red ribbon during red ribbons, <laughs> <laughs> I 
suffering such as, uh, during the last week in October and throughout November, um, Americans demonstrate their adherent opposition to drugs. You know, they're paying homage to not only the special agent from the DEA, but also to everyone else who's given their life in trying to protect us from, you know, alcohol, legal narcotics, all that. And Zach, do you think it's a good thing that teens stay away from alcohol and drugs? And Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know. It's a good thing to stay away from. It is. I was always raised just to stay away from that stuff. So was I. Yeah, it, it's, that stuff's dangerous. It is. Um, according to the DEA and National Family Partnership, approximately 80 million people participate wow. in Red Ribbon Week every year. That's, That's a lot of people. It, you fear there's what? Three, four hundred million people in America. That's that's a good chunk. Today, the Red Ribbon Week celebration, October twenty third to the thirty first, brings millions of people together to raise awareness of dangers of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs, and encourage prevention, early intervention, and treatment services. It is the largest, most visible prevention awareness campaign absorbed annually in the United States. So, okay, I, I've got a. What do you remember of Red Ribbon Week? Well, I remember back in elementary school years, they would give us lollipops, and it would say, lollipops. say no to drugs on them, and it would be red with the white lettering, and they, we would have, like, assemblies about it, and it was always saying, we are trying to encourage you children not to go near the drugs. Mm -hmm. It can cause very sad results and outcomes in your life. Yeah, they would educate us about all yeah. the statistics of it, and that was that was a lot of information to take in when you were a kid. Zach, it what, is. Was one, what was the most fun thing you did when you were in elementary school and it was Red Ribbon Week? I used to take the red ribbons and make earrings out of them. Really? And I, 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 I would run around school just like yelling, say no to drugs. It was awesome. I, a lot of people laughed, but I was proud. Well, we didn't do the fun things like stick cups into a fence. All we did was say, wear this bracelet and but, say no to drugs. You know, that, that was fun, too, with all the, you know, because everybody that came in and talked to us, they also gave, you know, they played games with us. You know, that was, that was one of the things that I remember from all the assemblies and stuff. It was a lot of fun. I don't really remember, like, all the assemblies. I remember no? the one that I had where we had a guest speaker come in. Mm -hmm. It was an officer, because I went to elementary school in Sacramento County, and the officer was from the Sacramento PD, and he's like, he talked about the consequences mm -hmm. of what drugs can do, and we're just like, huh? Because we didn't know. <laughs> yeah, my paper just dropped. Um, <laughs> Well, okay. We definitely have to talk more about this later. Yeah. It's awesome. I believe soon we're going to be going over to Danny and Carlin to... And they're going to be interviewing a couple of our... Awesome members. friends to talk more about, you know, the very Red awesome. Ribbon Week and, you know, all, the, all their memories from yeah. it. And so also just remember, just say no to drugs. Say no to drugs. So, yeah, that is... Once again, I'm Zach. And I am Danny. And we are going to be talking about drug awareness. Well, first, I think our guests should introduce themselves. I'm Andrew. I'm Nate. I'm Emily. <laughs> and we are here today to talk more about uh, since Halloween's coming up, everyone there's going to be a whole bunch of parties, and we're going to basically be talking about uh, drug awareness and how and some good tips for having uh, safe and fun parties. Yep. So, our first question for our amazing guests is, what's the most important part of drug awareness to you? Emily? Um, I think drug awareness is def is the most important part is the consequences, just being aware of the consequences. Because once you know what could happen if you try drugs and drink alcohol, I think that really scares people into not doing it. Mm -hmm. I think that's... That's a really good uh, tip, too, is just to not drink when, until you're 21. I think it's really about, like, becoming more knowledgeable and knowing more about stuff because the more you know, the more you're able to make educated decisions based off of what you know. And here's Nate. <laughs> I think that you should just really know what you're going to do, what it's going to do to you, 
And if you do know, you're probably not going to do it in the first place. And yeah. All right. Now let's move on to the parties. What do you guys like to do at parties the most? If you go to parties. When I go to parties, I don't do anything. I sit there and drink water. I, that's all I've ever done. Yeah. Same thing here. My parents, every single year, they'll drag me over to their parties, and I just end up sitting there awkwardly while all their friends are trying to talk with me. You know, it gets a little. It's you very awkward at times mm -hmm. as well. At least the food's good. Yeah. Speaking of food, what are good party foods for you guys? Your favorite party foods? Anything? Definitely for me, a good party food would be tamales. Yeah. I like. I like pizza because pretty much everybody likes pizza and there's kind for everybody. It makes it fun. <laughs> and you can always put different toppings on pizza too. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the chips. Always mm -hmm. bring chips. And what kind of dip? Always. Any kind. Yeah. Definitely like salsa it, if you're going to have chips. Yeah. Got to bring the salsa for the chips. So, what are some good games for parties? Um, I think fun games to play, well, it kind of depends on the occasion of the party, but for Halloween, I think bobbing for apples yeah. is fun, and it gets messy and crazy, and I think, um, pretty much games like that, or, um, scarecrow contests. Mm -hmm. Pumpkin pump carving contests. Pump pumpkin carving is fun. <laughs> If you're going to talk about Halloween trick-or-treating, it's definitely something yep. fun you do around Halloween time. And then all of the oh, candy. the candy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the Ex dentist appointment after. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the candy. No matter what your parents say, you're never too young to go trick-or-treating. Nope. Or dress up. That too. So, what are you guys planning to do for Halloween? I'm hanging with friends. Going trick-or-treating. I'm thinking about just relaxing for Halloween, you know, chilling. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. People. You aren't going to go out with at least some friends. I was thinking about getting some uh, pizza, going out with some friends, see some movies, all in costume. Yeah. That sounds good. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I know I'm going to dress up as a fairy, so I'm going to go somewhere dressed as a fairy. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, but... <laughs> What are you guys going to dress up as? I'm not really going to dress up. Oh, come on. You what have type to of dress fairy are you going to dress up as, Emily? Tooth fairy. <laughs> Go on. Fun fairy. You Garden could be Tinkerbell. Fairy. How about a candy corn fairy? I remember dressing <laughs> up like that as a kid. That was fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Flossing fairy. I'm just going to dress up in what I normally wear a black hoodie. <laughs> So, what do you guys think of the teen curfew coming in since um, Halloween's coming up? I know I own it's like 10, 10.30. Honestly, I don't know. I've never been caught out past the time. I think, honestly, we're all at ages where we're responsible enough to be allowed to stay out later mm -hmm. than teen curfews dictate. However, some people make irresponsible decisions, so here's the outcome. Um, well, we, I believe we have an ad break coming up, but one more quick question. I think um, there's one more thing that we have to remember. Um, if on October 13th, you can meet up with Friday Night Live and make a scarecrow with Friday Night Live. Scarecrow content. We have an ad break coming up, so Just here we go. Now. And I am Gabby. Oh, introducing yourself. That's a new one. <laughs> That's a natural thing, sorry. Works. 
Okay, so you are from Amador's Drama. Correct. I'm jealous. <laughs> okay, everyone at Argonauts Drama is jealous of you guys because you guys have that huge stage and everything. It's it's a it's a big change because I went to Argonaut too, but I really like the drama there. It's a huge advantage. Mm-hmm. So, so what um, what events do you guys have coming up? Well, right now we have the Broadway dinner coming up on October twentieth, and it starts at six p.m. And it'll be at the Immaculate Conception Hall in Cedar Creek on Spanish Street. Okay. Mm-hmm. What is the Broadway dinner? I've never been. Well, it's every year it kind of varies, but this year we will have a various amount of musical numbers, and we will actually have our Amador drama. We will be doing some of our musical numbers from Fiddler on the Roof, and we have our Amador dance studio going to be there. We have the studio who's going to be there. And star dancers. You're just rubbing it in. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that hurts. You have to come watch. Maybe. I don't know if I can go to Amador. It's dangerous. Well, how much are tickets? Well, tickets are $25, but we actually are sold out. So that's a good thing and a bad thing because I would like more people to come. But unfortunately, there's no more tickets, so... Okay. Awesome! Yay! So yeah, with all, with all those tickets sold, you've got to raise some, uh, you know, some money. What, where does all that money go to? Well, last year I think we raised about two thousand dollars, and but I know only a little amount of it actually goes to drama. Most of it goes to floral and foods because oh. they put it together. Oh, we just okay. entertain. And so I guess there's also um, like raffle prizes and stuff. Uh, yeah, we have the silent auctions. Um, we every year we have the silent auction, which, and we have a silent auction and then like a regular auction, and we have raffle prizes. So a lot of people buy those at the door. Okay. See, I've never been to a silent auction. What is it exactly? I've never actually paid attention to the silent auction because I've always been changing in the back, switching costumes. Uh, but I'm pretty okay. sure you just walk around and you see an item, and if you want it, you write your name on like a list underneath it, and at the mm-hmm. end. They just look for like the highest bid. Okay. Something good idea. around something like that. Just arguing out of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's good you idea. know, those people who talk really, really fast. <laughs> I yeah, can't I... understand them. Though I think Mr. Turner would be a, can- a good candidate for that. He can he can definitely yeah. talk. Yes, he can. <laughs> be an earful. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of um you mentioned the fiddler on the roof, but what other shows are gonna be represented? Well, we will, because there's various musical numbers coming up. I know Fiddler on the Roof will be, um, we'll have three numbers from that. Um, I'll be performing a song from a musical called Memphis. I know we'll have some from Annie, Grease, um, Hollywood Hotel, and a lot of others. Hmm. So a lot of different musicals. What's your favorite um, piece or part of it? Like yeah. fa- my favorite part of the Broadway dinner? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like to sing, so I think like just the singing is my favorite. I like to dance too, but this is my first year actually dancing mm-hmm. for the yeah. Broadway dinner. That's so. fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> wish that I could sing, but I, I can't. Hey, I think everybody can sing if they put their mind to it. Yeah, Zach. Exactly. It really is. I think like, some <laughs> people do it as like a profession, but I like to do it as a hobby, you know? So if you're doing it as a hobby, I don't really think people focus on the sound. My shower head hates me. <laughs> Everybody yeah. sings in a shower. I think everyone's in denial if they say they don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so how, you said that it was sold out. How many people are you expecting to come? Well, we only have 100 seats available, so we are expecting roughly 100 people. Okay, mm, that's, that's, that's a lot. pretty good revenue, yeah. actually. Because the hall is actually pretty small. So we really have to like spread it out. So. We practice in the band room. <laughs> don't, oh. don't don't complain. I'm sorry. You, you, you guys have. You, I'm jealous. I remember the band room, so I I understand. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Okay, so what what other shows are coming up? Um. Well, I know on November fifth we have the solo acting where people recite two monologues, one being classical, the other being mm-hmm. contemporary, and it is five dollars admission, and it is at six thirty. Okay. Yeah, and we, we have Fiddler on the Roof coming up in December. So. It'll be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to watch that one. It'll be good. No, are both excited. of these performances at Amador? Oh, yes. They're both at Amador. All our performances are usually on our stage in the fine arts room. <laughs> our rubbing big it, stage. Still wrapping it in. <laughs> With the spotlights and all. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. we, we have 
the folding chairs in, in the sides. <laughs> they work, right? Yeah, I can tell you kind of get folded up in one. <laughs> I'm not going back to freshman year. That was not fun. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Should have got that on video. I know. No. No one's was... freshman year is really fun. I will admit, mine was horrible. I, I, hear, <laughs> I hear that Nate had a pretty good freshman year. Mm. You never know. No. I'll, you'll have to ask him later. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> so, pretty on. soon, we're going to be going over to... Um, DJ and Hattie. Yeah, and they're going to be talking about entertainment and stuff. This is one of my favorite yeah. segments, I don't know why. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm DJ. And I'm Hattie Hunchy. And today we will be talking about entertainment. We have four or five, maybe, um, different things to talk about. The first one would be... Um, the Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. That is a new movie coming out, and it's coming out on December 14th, 2012. I believe it would be a prequel to the uh, Lord of the Rings, or, yeah, Lord of the Rings. I think I'd go see it. What about you? Um, I think I might. I like the Lord of the Rings, I do have to say. Yeah, pretty good. Then series. we have another movie coming out, and that's one of my personal favorites. It's Monsters, Inc. It comes out December 19th, 2012. Oh, yeah. Do you like Monsters, Inc.? Definitely. I used to watch it's it. It's in 3D, too. Oh, it's in 3D? Yeah. Sweet. You didn't know that? No, I did I not. <laughs> and then, yeah. do you, like, have you, any, have you heard of any of the iPhone apps of the week? Yes, um, flow free is one. Basically, there's a, a grid, and there's two colored dots. You got to match them all up together, make a line, and you have to fill in all the spaces on the grid. Have you played it? Yes, I have. And would I'm, you recommend it to people? Oh yeah, it's addicting. <laughs> and then we have another one called Bad Piggies. It is pretty much the pig version of Angry Birds. It's oh, the pig yeah. side of the story. Yeah, I think you get to build some uh, air kind of aircraft thing. I haven't played it yet, so I don't know. Me neither. <laughs> Waiting for that dollar. No. <laughs> um, Did you hear that with the new iPhone upgrades that YouTube is being taken out of it? Yeah, I'm actually kind of wondering about that, like why they took it off. I mean, it was built in originally. But now they, I guess they took it off, so that way YouTube can you have, have their own app. And then you have to like re-download it, but it's free. Yeah, I've it's heard free. it's free, cause it ha it is a Apple mm. app, so yeah, it, it is, is free. App. So DJ, have you gone to see any movies at all? Um, not lately. Oh really? <laughs> I need to go to see some. Well, the last movie I saw in th in theaters was Finding Nemo 3D. Oh, cool. I really like that movie. Um, I prefer I little kitty the, movies sometimes. <laughs> yeah, the old Pixar movies or yeah. Disney movies. I think the last movie I saw was Avenger, Avengers. That Avengers. movie was really good. I oh, saw yeah. it in 3D. I do have to admit, it was in the box office for a long time. Oh, yeah, definitely. I saw it with my dad and my grandma and my family, and we loved it. Oh, yeah. And I would recommend to people who haven't seen it, Go and rent it or buy it because it's out on DVD and watch it. It's really good. Oh, yeah. So, DJ, are you a video game player? I'm, I, to be honest, I don't play video games. I don't, <laughs> like, like video games all that much. Um, lately, no. Do you have a favorite Halloween movie, though? Because I do. It's all like the scary movies, like Paranormal Activity. Oh, yeah. I love, I love scary movies to watch on Halloween. Activity. Yes, uh, Paranormal Activity would have to be one of my favorites. Uh, I think one of my all time favorites, though, would have to be a Halloween movie. Like, like one of the which Halloween ones. movie? I don't know the name of it. Like, it's, uh, yeah, it's called Halloween. Uh, Walking Dead? Do you <laughs> like zombies? Because I love watching zombie movies. Like, I love Zombieland. Zombieland oh is a my great gosh, movie. I love that movie. Zombieland was awesome. My that uncle was, was the one that showed me that movie. <laughs> I showed my mom, and she thought that it was going to be, like, all scary. But then really? we watched it, and it was so funny. I got to admit. Um, so, what would be one of your favorite apps on the iPhone? I do have to say I love Jetpack Joy Ride. Oh, my gosh. That is so addicting. I play that in study hall 
and I don't get my work done. I'm jealous. My brother's highest is 4,091. Oh. Mine's only 3,900. I, I think I've gotten to 38. So, what are you doing for Halloween? For Halloween? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I know last year I kind of sat at home and just gave candy away, but this year I think I might go out with a group of friends. We might go to a haunted house or, you know, some fun stuff like that. Well, I am going trick-or-treating. I always go trick-or-treating. I don't think anyone's too old to go trick-or-treating. That's true. We're getting ready to go to a... Oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry about that, but, like, <coughs> if you go out, what are you going to dress up as? I know I'm going as a dead cheerleader. If I was to go out, I think I'd have to go as a classic murderer. But, um, what would be your favorite candy? My favorite candy? Skittles. Oh, Skittles. All the way. I love Skittles. <laughs> what about you? What's your favorite candy? Uh, I used to like chocolate, but not anymore. So I think my favorite one would have to be sour gummy worms. Right. Sour gummy worms are pretty good. Pretty good. So, are you going to go to the movies anytime soon and go see a movie? Um, actually, I think I might want to go see that Hobbit movie, The Hobbit. I heard Hotel Transylvania just, well, I knew it just came out, but I heard, because some of my friends saw it, and I'm really jealous, and they said it's amazing. I, I know, I saw that on the box office list, but, oh, looks like soon we'll be going to an ad break. So, see you guys later. And this is Jesse from Monroe County Recreation Agency. Hello. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. So, working with ACRA, Ad ACRA, ACRA, what's your job title there? I am technically a recreation aide, but that entails much more. So, as a recreation aide, what do you do? Um, I help plan events throughout the county. Um, we'll get into a little bit about that later. I also run an after-school program, and um, you know we post flyers and maintain our Facebook page and marketing and <laughs> media and letting everyone know what's going on. That seems Perfect very cool. Yeah, it's fun. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of working after school, like what age group do you work with? We run an after-school program in Plymouth, and it's for 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Mm. And anyone can come. It's free, anyone in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. They don't have to be from Plymouth or Iron, yes. is what I mean. So um, it's a really good opportunity for those kids. And it's free. We do field trips. Um, we help with homework. Yeah. I would definitely I could, I could, use, I could yeah. use that back then. <laughs> Especially ask my mom. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does your organization do, like, um, besides working after school, like, what other events do you help plan and sponsor? Well, a couple of events that we have coming up, um, our next one, which is in October, is on the 27th, I believe, which is a Thursday, we're doing our Carvo Lantern, which is a mm. pumpkin carving competition. That's an interesting and name. Yeah. <laughs> It's $10 for a pumpkin, and uh, we'll supply you with the kits, and some people can paint if they're concerned with, you know, knives and family. So it's, you know, all ages friendly. Yeah. And that'll be at the train, Jackson Train Museum Park. Okay. Yeah. Is which there, is just right over here. Is there a specific age group that I love carving pumpkins? <laughs> no, everybody can come. Yes. I'll be there. <laughs> He'll be there. I'll be there, hopefully. <laughs> Um, well, that's one of them. And then further out in December, we have our um, gingerbread house decorating, which Ooh. we did last year, and it was a huge success and a lot of fun. And I remember doing that when I was little. I always had a blast doing that. And, of course, you'd get the icing everywhere. And Naturally. My, yes. My little sister still does that, and I still eat the candy out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Every year. Plenty of candy. Plenty of candy and topping. So working with teens, what's the best events that you can think of that you guys have done or are going to do in near future or for our future? We did the haunted house last year, which was a lot of fun. We had a lot of teens helping and also coming to check it out. Unfortunately, Halloween falls on a, a Tuesday or a Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. this week. And so 
it was kind of too spread out in order to do it. So yeah. we'll probably yeah. bring it back once it's on a weekend or a more convenient day. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Um, but we, like I said, the pumpkin carving, all ages. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. And Excited. there's going to be great prizes, too, and who doesn't want to win things, you know? Yeah. And like I said, decorating gingerbread houses. Yeah, I, I will definitely Everybody. be there for that one. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Look for the guy in the ski mask. We also me. have a holiday pie making class which is coming up and that's for thirteen and up. So Yay. they can participate. Pie. Yes. What, what kind of pie? Pumpkin and pecan pie. Ooh. I love pumpkin pie. Check out our flyer on the website. When I was designing it, all I wanted to do was eat pie. <laughs> <laughs> Inspiration. Yes. Who doesn't like pie? Yeah. <laughs> I mean honestly, okay. What's your favorite kind of pie? Apple. Okay. You? Apple. Me and my sister used to have competitions. See who can make the best ones. It takes forever, though. They do. I'm clearly outnumbered, and my favorite's cherry. Oh, cherry is good, though. It, it's good, but you, you can't go wrong with good old apple pie. Plus, yeah. it's technically fall now, so I mean, yeah. pumpkin. Yeah. Pumpkin, apple. yes. We'll, we'll settle Definitely. On that. <laughs> but you gotta go back to the classics on that one. <laughs> For sure. So, what else would you like to just tell us about diff like just interesting things that you've done with your job or through ACRA? Um, well, I just like working there in general because we like to get the community involved. Those are just a few of the activities we have going on now, but throughout the year we have many different things. Um, we just did a triathlon, which was very successful, and uh, just stay tuned on our website, really. Yeah, you'll have to tell us more about that. Um, now we are going over to our awesome cooking segment with... Hattie and DJ, and we are making... What are we making? Smoothies. Amazing. Oh, and I heard they're awesome, yeah. so here we go. Pretty soon. Hi, everybody. It's DJ again. Oh. Hi, everybody. It's DJ again. And I'm Hattie. And today... And we are going to make smoothies. Yay. We're going to make strawberry kiwi smoothies, and it includes Greek yogurt and sugar. You can substitute the strawberry jam with strawberries and you can substitute sugar with honey. Well, the ingredients are two kiwis, 17.6 ounces of Greek yogurt, three tablespoons of strawberry jam or three strawberries, and then it's two tablespoons of sugar or honey. All right, so. Okay, so now we're gonna cut the kiwi into the stuff. Yeah. Okay. Patty will be cooking, cutting up the those. All right, I'm going to add, hopefully, yeah. here, switch places with me real quick so I can add this yogurt to the blender. All right, let's open this up. So we're going to add the whole thing. Oh. Whoa, hey, did you know there's paper in here? I did not know that. No. I just stabbed it with the spoon. Well, that spoon was used for the strawberry jam, but okay. Oh, well, we have two, two spoons. One was used for the sugar, but okay. <laughs> You cut the kiwi into thin slices. Get rid of the top and bottom. Well, they're both tops and bottoms. Because you don't want to use that part. Because it has all the vines and stuff on it. Okay. Mix up that yogurt. And then... Some... The yogurt smells really good. Oh, I know. And I then, really when you're putting in the strawberry jams and the honey or sugar, make sure that like it's even scoops and not just like adjusted amounts like make sure like you try to get it as even as possible yeah. dj do you like smoothies i do do you prefer smoothies over some like because like smoothies over candy can be a very good trade oh yeah definitely i would if i could i would probably drink a smoothie every day and then when you're doing adding the ingredients make sure you add them in like not like throw them in well you do throw them in but like Make sure that they're almost exactly. Okay, there we go. Got some. Can you uh, open that up? Cause like I am so not strong enough to open that up. <laughs> okay, here, hold on. Let me just dry my hands off the yogurt that I got on my hands. There we go. That was so scary. <laughs> and then DJ, can you take this, that spoon that you just used and put the um, sugar? Yeah, here, hold on. Let me wipe it off with this paper towel. That way, I don't get sugar in the yogurt. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> There you go. So two spoons, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right, one. Two spoons. Ugh. I can't.
can't get it. It won't come out. It's that clumped of sugar. I hate that. Don't you hate that? Okay, and then you want to make sure you put the lid on it. Oh, yeah. Big and old mess. Would not be good. It's really loud. Okay. But here. you cook it on hot, like you do it on high for a few minutes, one to two or 30 seconds until it's well blended. <laughs> What's going on? Um, is the yogurt stopping the uh, blade? Yeah. We should have put the yogurt on top. Oh, yeah, that would have been a good idea. Pour some water. Here, I'll put the lid on top of the strawberry. I don't see the lid. There we go. That was fast. Do yeah, it. we're gonna have to mix some more up. <laughs> DJ. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. I think the yogurt got too cold. Can we get so. the, like other people to come on if they want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we try to mix up this. Uh, there we go. There. Okay. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Guys, get in this pose as possible. Get all comfy clothes. Keep it locked. Good. <laughs> there we go, it's starting to get mixed up. Almost. <laughs> my sure love yogurt salad. Oh, that was... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, who wants one Good one, Danny. I do. DJ, do you want to pour it? Yeah, sure. Alright. Yeah, I, I went to him, I went to him. The taste of artificial strawberries. I think that was, I think that jam. Yeah, oh here, give the straws. Zach first. <laughs> We couldn't find any of the small umbrellas, sadly. Oh, Are I'm you really? Sorry. Danny, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hello, microphone. All right, who else wants some? <laughs> Gavin wants one. All right. Nate wants one. Oh, one. Behind me. Joe, Joe would, would like you like one? one? Okay. Danny, you are so mean to me. <laughs> hey, Zach. Okay, let's talk about what happened on the show earlier. So, Red Ribbon Week, what is all your guys' opinion? It's coming, Joe. Don't do drugs, they're bad. It's definitely red. Who else wants one? Don't do drugs. Do you do? Not one? cool. No. Who else wanted one? Honestly, my opinion of it, I think it's a great, great group that they put on. It probably helps out a lot of people, and it's just an overall good experience for everyone. Okay. Who else wanted some? Don't okay. use drugs. Okay. Only use drugs as prescribed by doctors. But even over-the-counter drugs can be dangerous. Help so support the Ross directions. family. Yeah, help support the Ross family. And listen to your doctor, family. definitely. Ross. Oh, yeah, thank you, oh, yeah. thank you to, to our guests. guests. Thank you to Roundtable. Nice thank you to Roundtable. We'd also like to thank our guests, Jesse and Gabby from Ooh. Amador. Yeah, Ooh. Amador. And again, we'd like thank to thank Roundtable, the last honest pizza. It was very good. Okay, this thing is awesome. Delicious. very good. I'm gonna have to rewatch this. Thank so you for letting us this. borrow the blender. Yeah. Did you blend the paper in here? I can give you I the hope recipe. not. <laughs> Thank you. Because this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't see any paper on the blade. <laughs> okay. Smoothies. Awesome. Yeah. Delicious. Once again, please help the Ross family in their time of need. And these smoothies are amazing. I encourage everyone to try them. Oh, and this week. Next, Next week, week <laughs> there will be uh, an oct over October break. There won't be any TZL, TZ Live. And we're saying goodbye. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.